when it comes to suspicion and insecurity and doubt and all of that mistrust, um, there are it could stream or stem from different you know sources of our existence. I always say that we are not um, we are not monochromatic human beings. We are multicolored. We are multifaceted. We are a combination of over 400 external or extended family member traits. And then we also have our social grooming. All of that will come to determine how I see the world. All of this will shape my worldview. So it is unique to me. And sometimes it has nothing to do with my partner. But let us start from my partner. How do I see my partner? Do I see them in the way that shows respect? Because you see, if you respect some people or someone, there are things you wouldn't think about it. I mean, when, when it comes to those people, you don't you don't associate them with some things. I'm sure we, we all know that that simple adage that says, hey, I would, have, I would have never thought that this person can do this. That goes a long way to tell you how you see the person, you see. But there are some people, you. it's like whenever you see them, it's like something that triggers you, something that makes you feel a certain type of way. It could be their phone mannerism. It could be their general behavior, their feeling. You know, some people naturally act very secretive and then all of that. So at the end of the day, after you've seen this person related with the person up to a certain point, you, you form a certain impression about the person. But like I said, most often it has to do with whether you see the person in the light of respect or you see the person as just anybody. Another thing would also be how the relationship is, itself started. How the relationship itself started. In my premarital counseling, one question I always ask is how did you guys start your relationship? Was it that both of you were single and you started dating? Was it that one person was in a relationship and then the two of you were dating simultaneously or, you know, uh, concurrently? And then eventually, um, yes, the, the, the right word is concurrently. <laughs> eventually, one person moves from the relationship and start dating you. Once it happens, the other person will never trust you because if I can be with you while you are with another man or you are with another woman, you can do the same thing to me. So I was with you when your boyfriend or girlfriend called. I heard the lies you told. So the next time I am on the other side of the phone and I call you and you tell me you are here, you are there, I'm yeah. second guessing you. Mm. Because when we were yeah. doing it on the side, <laughs> on the low, I knew the stories you were telling the other person. And uh, yeah. most of that is the source of the insecurity in relationship. So that, you see that most of it is the, is the ladies, right? Pidgey, I don't know what I did. Like, Pidgey, I'm so transparent. I love this guy. I'm like, how did the relationship start? Oh, well... He was in a bad place, or I was in a bad place. And that, you know, so immediately you do that. People, human beings are funny. Someone will bend over for you and will use it to judge them. Because when it comes to us, we feel insecure by what they did. And we fear they will, they will also do the same thing for somebody else. So there is that as well. Then previous relationship. Um, okay, so there was the bit about what Ariel said, how we see ourselves. If you look down on yourself, trust me, Adam, you will never be good enough. And nothing somebody else will do yeah. for you will be good enough for you. They can cut themselves up for you. They will put their head on a silver plate for you. They will roll on the floor for you. Because you don't see yourself as good enough for them, you would always suspect them. And then again, when we also look at the relationship dynamics that we ourselves have had, if you've dated a high-value person, somebody who knows when to call, somebody who misses your call, or once when you call them, they come pick, they quickly text you. Somebody who updates you on what they are doing, wherever they are going and all of that. There is that level of intentionality. There is that level of intensity in that relationship. So everything is pepe pepe. You are a business person or you are a corporate person. You are busy. You go up and down. You want a partner who understands these dynamics of your life and work with you. So you see, once that relationship ends and you start a new relationship and you are dating somebody who doesn't update you, who doesn't think that it's important for me to tell you where I am? Who doesn't think it's important for me to return your call when I see it? You have to call me back again. Like, you know, you you it kind of makes you feel that you are dating below. And you begin to doubt them. You begin to suspect them. You begin to feel that, wait, if I dated two people who are very open, very communicative, why are you not being communicative? Is there something you are hiding? hiding Could yeah. there be that you have a second gig on the side? Could there be something that I, I don't see? Because why can't you tell me where you are? It's not like I'm coming to track you. I just need to know so that if I had to meet you, if I had to tell you that, okay, let's meet at this place, come here, come there, we can do all of that. Or sometimes just give me the comfort of knowing that my girlfriend is here, my boyfriend is here, they are doing this, they are doing that. It's just part of the general dynamics of the relationship. But I don't see it with you. What are you hiding? 
So, Adam, there is that as well. And then the final thing I'll say, I know um, we all have to um, share. The final thing I'll say is that childhood past and trauma, you know, how you were also raised can raise a lot of doubts and suspicion and insecurities in you. So we are looking at attachment, um, you know, some form of attachment um, um, styles that some people have. We are looking at relationship between children and their parents as they're growing up. We're looking at reward and punishment. We are looking at um, positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement. We are looking at all of those things. And while we don't know this, it is shaping the person's thoughts. So they easily panic. For instance, you know that when your father calls and you don't pick up, it, it's world war for you. So when your partner calls, or when you call your partner and they don't pick, you want to give them the same world war because you think there was a reason why your father was doing that. And so now you are bringing it into your own marriage. You know, so and then these, and I'm sure many more, Reverend, I'm sure might have some that I feel lead to these doubts and insecurities and mistrust in relationships. 